Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system from the user Tuppy in Discord, so a massive thank you to them for sending this system in and without further ado guys, let's go ahead and see what he has prepared for us here. So, where are we? So here it is here, so it's called the, Mo so the Mongrat system, was that, uh, yeah Mongrat solar system, cool, right. Okay. Oh, it's got like a big outer ring. Oh, we've got the lighter Milky Way background. Don't see that background used very often. Nice. Okay. So, star itself. Hello, everyone. This is my first solar system from Neptune. I hope you enjoy it. Tuppy. Right. So, this description was written by Earth inhabitants in the year 3281. Okay. So, the Mongrat solar system is a system 2.0 light years away from Earth. So... Interesting stuff. This system has magically appeared near our own solar system. Okay. The star is a G-type star around a mass of 1.4 suns. There are 16 major planets in the system with a couple of moons, all of them unique in their own way. We're going to be going over approximation to the star itself. Alright, excellent. So, first up we've got Tronkit. So that is the closest orbit to the star here. Okay. So, the first of the worlds. Looking pretty thick atmosphere. So closest planet to its star in the system, Venus like with its very thick atmosphere, this was one of the first planets to form in the solar system and it's said to have pressure so high that it can crush anything so that's going to be pretty insane, don't send anything there, ok next up we have got uh, Gob, Gob. <laughs> so uh, a barren mountainous planet with a very thin atmosphere, similar to Mercury with shades of light green but much smaller than Mercury in its mass and size, its atmosphere is known for its characteristic uh, Cabos of smell, uh, a fruit from Earth native to the Amazon rainforest. Excellent. Nice. Okay. Next up, we have got this green one. So, this is um, Col Colotus, a gas giant that rolls throughout its solar system, much like Uranus. And it is composed mainly of methane and ammonia, which gives the planet its characteristic green hue. It's a nice looking planet. Due to its proximity, Mongrat's six magnetic fields, you may notice a blue planetary aurora. Um, it is said to have storms of acidic rain and glass. Pretty dangerous indeed. It's like a hot Neptune in a way. Tilted on its side, obviously that Uranus. There's the Aurora. You can see the light green or light blue area, sorry. So that's tilted on the other side. So for instance, let's do a bit of a, a voila. So just rotate it around so it's facing this side. So there you go. Nice. Okay, next up we have got uh Dicomba over here. So this one is glowing hot. Okay, what is going on here? So here it is. So, a world that looks like it's been ruined. Um, a Clothian planet, meaning it was once a gas giant, but its atmosphere got relatively stripped away, leaving only its core out. Uh, it is said that one day it will collide with Mongrat and leave no traces of its previous existence. Pretty sad. Okay. Next up, we got Eixa over here. A super Earth planet that used to have deep temperature rainforests, various muddy valleys, and mud volcanoes that once populated. But one day, the sea level mysteriously rise causing the mass extinctions of this species. You can still find drifting ruins full of stock into food. Everything is decomposed, even uh, plastics. Various pictures, fossils and evidence show the uh, civilization was spider-like creatures. Okay, so what happened here? So a big flood. So maybe global warming of some kind. Flooded all the polar caps. It's an all-ocean world now. It's only at minus 29 degrees though, so mysterious stuff. Maybe it's some sort of geological activity pushed up a load of water from here deep in the planet's crust and core maybe could be quite an interesting thing there but yeah nice looking ocean world okay next up we've got Ultomni over here this beautiful planet with one of the best solar eclipse views ever ah, okay it does have a moon as well okay with the exotic moon solar eclipses are daily um, they are formed together making a material much like Venus and Earth but goob smells more like a mix of ammonia uh, rather than Kahu. Oh man, you're really getting me with the pronunciation on that one, Tuppy. And there's its uh, moon as well. Okay, cool. So now we are heading to Aia over here. So taking a step further out. So if we're looking at orbits, we are now over here. Okay. It's got a nice little ring system as well. Check that out. Okay. 
So a nice warm and colourful oval shaped dwarf planet with thin rings and a beautiful geologically active moon called uh, Delo. The planet has really valuable and colourful rocks, crystals and ores. It is also said to have captured to the solar system millions of years ago coming from far away. So this object is very very old and there's this moon as well. Okay, excellent. Okay, next up we've got uh, Smogark. That's over here. This obscure world probably had the worst fate in the hands of the civilization. As they used Smoga, a planet previously holding plastic plant life and possibility for um, for future their own use, uh, instead of taking care of it, made factories on the surface and now devastated the entire surface. Now smog is present in the entire atmosphere. Uh, acidic rain is the only type of rain that occurs in this planet and the oceans are polluted, full of radioactive waste. As for the factories, they're all in ruins now and have mutated a few species of plants. All that waste is very ring of space pollution has also been created. Asteroids have been pulled to Smogos atmosphere and turned their moons all named after the Greek alphabet. Nice. That's a very horribly polluted world. Definitely not where you want to go. So look at the state of that. So yeah, very toxic there. Right. And there's a bunch of moons. So yeah, all named after the Greek alphabet. Check that out. Nice. Okay, next up we're heading to Tomco's. Still got plenty of planets to check out here. Okay. The most recent formed object in the solar system with its pink coloration has to do with the fact that there are being reports of red sprites constantly showing up in the atmosphere. So that's a nice purple gas giant there. It's looking good. Really nicely designed as well. Quite a realistic sort of band design. Actually, I quite like it. I may actually grab a little copy of that. that is a, that's a good looking planet. I do like it. That definitely fit well as like a warm Neptune or something as well. Um, anyways, moving on. So next up we have to harvest. So that's over here. Arid mountain system full of sand, it is truly the one out of this solar system. Somewhat very special is its oil, which comes in exceptional amounts. You can even spot oil seas on the surface view. Okay, interesting. Nice. Uh, let's have a little look. There you go, that's a good look at. So, turn the water on and off, there you go. There is your oil. So, pretty cool stuff. Um... They use the oil in many ways, and yeah, the oil was more abundant back then. They also attempts to colonize in this planet, but they were too afraid of the frequent dust bowls and acidic carbon storms. Did you notice its shattered moon? There are two beautiful sets of rings which formed a collision of two smaller objects back then. Okay. So there is Orville. Ah, okay, so you can see the wreckage of this moon as well. So a lot of debris flying around. Okay. Nice. Cool. So next up, we've got Notion. Flat. Uh, that's over here. Next plan is out. So a very intense band object. So a beautiful sight to behold. This exotic ice giant, the biggest in the solar system that looks pretty, but it's like really toxic. But apparently the system didn't care and decided to explore, thinking they would find another civilization. But they were dead wrong, as you can see by the rings, which are actually remains of Ixian spacecraft. Some stuff are still holding it. Okay. So there's spacecraft there. Nice. Lots of probes chilling around there. Next up we've got Gashon over here. The pale green ice giant holds a very treasured possession, which is its liquid neon oceans, below the surface and bromine rain. Tornadoes in Gashon can become water spats due to the liquid neon ocean creating very pretty displays and hypercanes producing gusts of wind above 2,000 km an hour while also carrying major amounts of liquid neon. Gastron has a moon called Skirmish, which is a mini Neptune planet with a dark vortex under its surface. There are also theories that support the idea that Gastron alongside Skirmish were captured from another solar system. Nice, so there's its moon. It's a mini Neptune looking design. Very nice there. Okay, so next up we have got this world here. Petonese over here. It's a nice looking world. But I don't know where it, uh, this object is familiar, but I don't know where it's from. Something isn't right. Anyway, it's a similar ice shine. It's the windiest planet in this system. Supersonic winds are common in Hetes, and various storms occur on this planet below this planet's surface. It has two moons, Tripod and T Killer. The latter was actually colonized by the mysterious civilization from Mixia. Uh, the name of that moon is oddly familiar to first in Lucin 2. Okay, cool. It's a nice gas giant as well. I do like it. I'll get a copy of that as well. Why not? Cool. Centaur's moons. We've got a tripod over here. And then over here we've got 
tech killer. Of course, he's got some oceans on there as well. Nice. Okay, next up we got Caldo. So that is this orange one. This is a planet with the most mass in the solar system, which almost turned into Mongrax's fine binary tin. It failed, of course. The planet is mostly famous for its relatively calm but turbulent interior with a very hot atmosphere. Kelvin, Hermos, and uh, lenticular shaped gas clouds show up pretty commonly. Look these clouds up, you won't regret it. Okay. Aside from that, it has two moons, Caldera and Explosa. It is actually has a moon too called Eruptor. This is one fun coincidence, I mean that Caldo has a sub moon. Alright. Cool. Let's head it over here. Cool. Okay, next up we have got Rogon. The furthest natural rocky planet in this solar system. It has freezing temperatures, a thick atmosphere, and frequent blizzards. The planet is said to go rogue one day, as its name suggests. So that's Rogon. So it is underneath, so yeah, everything pretty gold and chilly. Okay. Next up, we got Silkwood over here. The furthest planet in the solar system overall. So this ice giant with a red coloration is composed mainly of hydrogen, helium, and ammonia. The planet also has some nice rings to look at, but why are the rings from this planet named Cranbourne? That's odd. Aside from this, there is also a sato orbit in it, most likely from its inhabitants. Okay, so. Looking good. And then next up, we got Cranbourne's remains. So the, that is here. We found the culprit behind the mysterious name, a small asteroid that orbits near Silkwood, apparently a 16th planet that was meant to form in this solar system. Um, that's a lot of planets. But when this journey ended um, prematurely, when it crashed at Silkwood, when the solar system was still young. Now this solar system is about 9 billion years old, it was supposed to take Rogon's planet as the furthest rocky planet. I sent a file containing Cranbourne's official look as it to look if it didn't crash into Silkwood. Okay, so what I'll, see, I'll quickly uh, get that, because he sent a... Um, to put that in objects because he did send this separately as well so let's go ahead and spawn it in so Cranbourne if it didn't have its accident so let's go ahead and see and that's it thanks for reading and reviewing my solar system what is your favorite object subscribe to next union guy awesome stuff there okay anyway so Cranbourne so this is uh its original appearance that's what it would have looked like originally so as you can see a lot of it's been destroyed so yeah completely ruined and yeah lost a lot of its size from that okay cool so lining all the objects up so if i was to pick a favorite let's go to flashlight or studio sorry that works um i did like the purple gas giant and after i do like that blue one as well uh Hetanese. i like that i do rate that i think that one's look really nice um yeah definitely those uh, i think i'd pick them over the rocky worlds yeah definitely but yeah there we are for this system so again a massive thank you to tuppy for sending this system in is and like he said subscribe to the tuning guy let's see if we can uh hit 27,000 subscribers soon as so, yeah we're working out there so a massive thank you to you all who have recently subscribed and everyone who continues to come back to every video really really appreciate it massive thank you indeed let's see if we can go for let's see if we can go for 40 likes on today's video as well guys and yeah, that all said and done. Again, a massive thank you to Tuppy for sending this system in. And yeah, guys, stay safe out there. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.